the tragedy is that many people in Britain do not understand the origins of the European community. They think, because this is what they've been told, it was just about trade. It wasn't. Actually, the European community started in response to war. The most devastating war the world had ever known. The second of two world wars that originated on our continent of Europe. A war in which around 60 million people were killed and a new word, genocide, had to be invented to describe the indescribable, which was the systematic and industrial murder of many millions of people. So when peace came at last, after five gruelling years of war, there were two words that resonated across our continent of Europe and the world. Never again, never again. And some of the greatest minds and most compassionate souls thought up initiatives in this post-war period to try and avoid something like this happening again because it was like we had lost humanity. And we started the United Nations, the International Court of Justice, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the European Convention on Human Rights, the European Court of Human Rights, NATO, and the European Coal and Steel Community, later to become the European Economic Community, and later to be called the European Union. All of these post-war initiatives were started for the same reason, to try and create peace and security and humanity after the most devastating war the planet had ever known. And in particular, our war leader, Churchill, great war leader, in the immediate post-war years, set his mind to thinking what would be the antidote to war on a continent that was infamous for its countries resolving differences between each other by violence and war. What was his answer to that? We must recreate the European family in a regional structure called, it may be, the United States of Europe. And the first practical step would be to form a Council of Europe. If at first all the states of Europe are not willing or able to join the Union, we must nevertheless proceed to assemble and combine those who will and those who can. So it was Churchill's idea, among others, to have a union of Europe as a whole. He is recognized as one of the 11 founders of today's European Union. And although at that particular time he didn't envisage Britain being a member, he was later to change his mind. We cannot aim at anything less than the Union of Europe as a whole. And we look forward with confidence to the day when that union will be achieved. And so it came about on the 25th of March, 1957, six countries came together, France, Italy, West Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg to create the European Economic Community. This was a remarkable achievement when you consider that these countries just a few years earlier were at war and one of these countries had subjugated most of the others in a terrible way. For them to get together so quickly after the Second World War is a big achievement and the reason they did it was not for trade. Trade was the means, but the goal was peace, peace on our continent. 